if we have summation from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n. This n is called index of summation. The n is called the index of summation. And this one, this is a starting value. It can be 0, it can be 2, it can be any value depending on the question. But for convenience's sake, we are choosing 1. So this one here is the first value of n. So this is the first value of n. And the infinity here is the last value of n. So this is the last value. And the a sub n here, the a sub n in front of the sigma is the formula for the terms. So this is the formula. So this is the formula for the terms. So if I want to expand this summation n to infinity of this, then what you are going to do is you are going to substitute from one. 2, 3 up to infinity, wherever, then we add wherever that we see n. So starting from here, I can see this is going to be a sub 1. Then I move to the second one or the next term where n equals 2 to a sub 2 plus the next term a sub 3 up to the infinite term. So this is what the sigma notation is all about. I know that most of you already know what it is, but for Expression of memory sick. I chose to explain a little bit. Now, we are talking about the convergence of arithmetic series here. Now, is it, it is important to know that when you have summation as n starts from 1 to infinity of a sub n, this the value that you are going to get when you sub uh, when you sum the terms from one to the infinite term, what you are going to have is the limit as n approaches infinity of the partial sum. So we are talking about arithmetic series. So we know how to find the sum of arithmetic series. So if we find the sum of the arithmetic series, then we take limits as n approaches infinity of that sum. The value that you are going to get. Is this value so you have to note that this um, relation is very important here okay. now let's move on to the actual view of the steps for testing for convergence or divergence of arithmetic series now this is quite simple the first thing that you are going to do is to find the partial sum of the given series so, Steps. The first thing is to find the partial sum Sn of the series. Then the second thing that you are going to do is to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the what of the series. So after you are done doing this, we have some conditions. Let, let's talk about the conditions. So after taking limits as n approaches infinity of, of the partial sum, if the, the limit as n approaches infinity of the partial sum is equal to a certain finite value, say s, or in other words, if the limit as n approaches infinity of the partial sum exists, that's when you take the limit, you are going to get a certain value, like 2 over 3 or 1 or something. When that happens, then you can say that the series is what? Convergent. So if after finding the partial sum and taking limit as n approaches infinity of the partial sum, and you get a finite value, it means the series is convergent. On the other hand, if limit as n approaches infinity of the partial sum is equal to plus or minus infinity. In other words, if the limit as n approaches infinity of the partial sum does not exist, 
then the series is called what a divergent series or the series simply diverges okay so these are some of the things that you need to know when you are talking about testing for the convergence or divergence of an arithmetic series let's start taking some examples so that we will understand better let's take this first example So we are supposed to determine if this series converges or diverges. Nation so this is the question. We are supposed to determine if series is going to diverge or converge. So solution. This is the given series. And I can rewrite this in the list form as this. There is an n here, so this is the formula. All right. So when n is equal to one, here will be one plus when n is equal to two, two plus three, and so on. So this is basically the same as this, right? Okay. So now that we know that our first term equal to one what is going to be our common difference just what two minus one which is also at one so we know our first term and we know our what common difference now let's take down the formula for the partial sum of an arithmetic series we know that s sub n equals n over two multiplying two e plus n minus one times g all right, so now let's substitute in our values. We have s sub n equals n over 2, 2 times a, which is 1, plus n minus 1 times d, which is 1. Now let's simplify. So s sub n is going to give us n over 2 multiplying 2 plus n minus 1. This is what you are going to have. So S sub n is going to be n over 2 n plus 1. Okay. Now this is what we have as the partial sum. So the next thing that we are going to do, because from the procedure, the first thing that we are supposed to do is to take what the partial sum of the series. And that's just it. This is it. This is the partial sum. So the next thing that we are going to do is to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the partial sum, which is the same as or which is equal to limit as n approaches infinity of n over 2 multiplying n plus 1. So now you should know that as n approaches infinity, as n becomes a very large value, this part. Of the fraction or this sorry this part of the of the um the partial sum becomes very large so with this part so a very large value will multiply a very large value and at the end of the day you are going to get a very large value so what it means is that limit as n approaches infinity of the partial sum is going to give us a very large value or will approach a very large value and like we said if the limit as n approaches infinity of the partial sum is a finite value, then it converges. But if it is plus or minus infinity, or its limit doesn't exist, then it diverges. So it is obvious that as n approaches infinity, the partial sum converges to a very large value. Therefore, the series was diverges. All right. So let's try another example. All right, we should determine that if this series converges or diverges, so this is the given arithmetic series. 
you can pause the video and try your hands on it. So solution. Like we did for the first example, we are doing exactly the same for this one. Let's read some of the terms in the series. We are going to have 4 plus 8 plus 12 and so on up to the infinite value. So from here, we know that our first term is what? 4. Our common difference is also going to be what? 4. Right? Because it's 8 minus 4 or 12 minus 8. Put down our formula for the partial sum. S sub n equals n over 2 multiplying 2a plus n minus 1 times d. Substituting in our values, we are going to have n over 2 times a, which is 4, plus n minus 1 times the common difference, which is 4. So after simplifying this, we are going to have partial sum as 2n multiplying n plus 1. So this is the partial sum. So from here, we do the usual. So we are going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of Sn, which equals limit as n approaches infinity of n, n plus 1. And again, as n approaches infinity, it's obvious that this part, to multiplying a large number, or an infinite num number will be a, a very large number. And n plus a very large number will also be a very large number. And just think about it, multiplying a very large number by a much more larger number is going to give you what? an infinite number so as n approaches infinity then the partial sum will always what approaches or will always approach what infinity so at the end of the day we can conclude that since the partial sum approaches infinity then the series is what a divergent series or the series what diverges so let's Try another example. We have this series here and we are testing if it diverges or converges. So this is the series that we have. Without wasting much time, let's start listing some of the terms in the series. So we know that when we end is equal to 1, the first term is going to be 9. The second is going to be 13. The third term is going to be 17. That order. So here, our first term is going to be what? 9. Our common difference is going to be 4. And we know that S of n equals n over 2 multiplying 2a plus n minus 1 times the common difference. Let's substitute our values in here. We're going to get 2, 9, which is 18. This is going to give us n minus 1 times what? Times d, which is 4. When we simplify, we are going to get 4n minus what? 4. S sub n is going to be n over 2 multiplying 18 minus 4, which is 14. 14. 14 plus 4n. So from here we take limit as n approaches infinity of the partial sum, which is n over 2 multiplying 14 plus 4n. So like we, like the other ones, just like the other questions, as n approaches infinity. The partial sum is going to be a very or you're going to approach a very large value therefore the series also what diverges so it is very important to note that for arithmetic series so far as the common difference is a non-zero value the series will always diverge and most arithmetic series have non-zero common 
a difference. Therefore, arithmetic series always diverges. Arithmetic series, they will always diverge. So that is that for today's lessons. Thank you for watching the video. See you in the next video. Have a nice day. Nice day.